What I propose you to do now is to work on this sidebar for the desktop and also for the mobile. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to bring a logo. Here is the logo that I created for this dashboard. Um, I'm going to create a component called logo that I'm going to inject inside my sidebar. So here in components, I'm going to type logo.view. And what I want to do is to initiate my component. So what you just see here is that I'm using a snippet. If you are looking for some snippet, you can download them from extensions. Otherwise, me, I got my own snippets written here. And here, this is my custom snippet. Tell me if you are interested by them, I can drop a link. Let's get back to the logo. So what I'm going to do here is to import the image. So the image of the logo, I'm going to type image here, source, and I'm going to grab the logo from the assets slash logo two dot PNG. And as an alt, I'm just going to put logo. Okay, so once I got this, I can come back. I can basically remove this JavaScript part that I don't need. I can come back here and just inject the logo by default. So I'm going to save that and suddenly we've got the logo, which is a little bit big. So what I want to do is to put here an overflow hidden and I'm going to put rounded LG and as a width, I'm going to put 45 pixels. And when I come back, I got this brand nice logo, logo there. So I'm going to keep it that way. And once it's done, what I want to do is to work basically to another component and you will understand why. This another component is going to be the menu. So here I'm going to type menu.view. Why? Because here inside um, my sidebar, I want to have two different behaviors. And these two different behaviors are relative to the sidebar that I want to create. Let me give you an example. So here, let's say that we're gonna have a div. So I'm going just to close this and uh, come here, that is going to be class relative, okay? And there will be a first div here that will be actually my mobile sidebar and then here my desktop sidebar. So when I come back, I got those two sidebar on top of each other and of course I don't want to show them like this. So what I would like to do here is to say at first that one is show, the other is not show. So with Tailwind CSS I can totally do it by using, uh, for example, flex LG hidden for this one and for the other one is going to be the opposite. Here it's going to be hidden LG flex, which means at a certain point, um, the desktop sidebar is going to show and the other is going to be hide. So to make the demonstration, I can put a color here, BG red for the sidebar mobile and BG green for the desktop sidebar. Okay, so we've got the desktop sidebar and I'm going to zoom a little bit. And look at this, when I change the side, actually, it's going to switch between the two. And it's the same if I reduce the size of the uh, window. So now, guys, we have a component, which is the component sidebar, that is going to handle the two behaviors of the sidebar. Okay, so I can basically remove that. And in both those sidebars, I'm going to have this menu. So what I can do here is just to come back here remove that and just import my sidebar menu. And remember, we are under Nuxt, so basically you can use the uh, uh, router to get the files like this. Okay, so we've got the menu on both sides. Now what I want to do at first is to work on this menu. On the menu and what I would like to do is to have a list of items that I'm going to display as a loop on this menu. So basically here is the model that I'm gonna have. I'm going to have a list of objects with a title and here it's going to be at first overview, okay? So here it's going to be the first page. So here it's going to be the list of the page that I want to create hypothetically into my application. So here I got transactions, then I wanna put for instance account and after that I can put uh, contact. Okay, let's put contact and contact with an S, there we go. And here it's going to be setting. So here I got a list that are going to be actually the path of every page. So what I need to add, of course, it's a path. And here it's going to be overview, 
Okay, and then I need to do exactly the same for each of them. Okay, so basically here I'm going to have the settings. Here I'm going to have contacts. And why I don't use actually the, the title as a pass? Because probably I want to have a different pass from the title. Okay, so that's what I want to do in here. Now let's work on the JavaScript part. So I'm going to go down here. And what I want to do here is at first to get a header which will be on flex item sender uh, with a gap to a paragraph um, a padding for sorry and that will be the beginning. So also what I would like to have is to have probably a hover and you will understand why we want to do some effects. Here I'm going to work, you understand, on the logo, then a transition and a cursor pointer. And probably later we will have a router push on it. So now I want to call my logo component. And after that, I would like to have my P font bolt. And let's say that we are going to call this project Next Finance. All right, so that's the name of the project. So now when I come back here, we can see that we've got our logo with exactly this on here. So it's really good. We can switch after that on the list. So here I'm going to have a division with a PX4 and a class grow because we would like to have the menu that takes all the space. And inside here, what I want to have is another div with a grid again, gap four. And this is where I'm going to loop through my item. So um, what I want to do immediately here, okay, what I want to do immediately is to loop through my list of items. So I got my items up here, and here I'm looping through my list of items. I'm going to give a bit of style after that. And inside I'm going to call the span, and inside the span I'm going to have the item dot title. So when I come back, we can see that I got all my elements that are here. Very nice. After that, I would like to give some style. I'm going to type class and it's going to be flex item center gap to px2 py1 a transition rounded. We're going to have all these effects when we pass our mouse on it. Cursor pointer and on over, it's going to be BG neutral 100 or, or 50, I'm not really sure. So now when I pass my mouse, you can see here that we've got these nice effects. Also the gap here is too big. I'm going to put a gap too. I think it's going to be better. There we go. Okay, we've got all these elements ready. There's something that I would like to add, it's icons. So let's work on an icon library. We can find here um, this next icon library. So that's what I'm going to install. I'm going to install npm install save Dave next icon. How does it work? So basically we install the package, okay? And we need to go to next config and as a module put our next icons. So here on my define next config, I need to add my next icon just here. After that, we are able to use the icon component and we can pass the name and the color of the icon if we want to. If we would like to use actually um, uh, different icons, what we need to do is to go on the official website that, are, that is coming actually from Iconify. So you go to iconify.design and here on the top you click on icons and basically here you're gonna have a lot of icons. So what you would like to do for instance is to type dashboard and here we can see that we've got several icons. And when I click on an icon, what I can do is to copy paste the name here of the icon, right? So what I can do is just to copy paste this and then inject my icon component with the, uh, with the corresponding name actually. So we are back on the menu and here I'm just going to type icon and I'm going to put the icon I just found, which is dashboard uh, line. There we go. Now I'm going to go down and down here, I'm going to put my icon component, which is recognized because we installed the package. I'm going to put a size of 20. And then as a name, I'm going to put what? But of course, I'm going to put item.icon and we should be good. And let's say that the color by default is going to be black. 
And when I come back, look at this, I got here the dashboard icon that is displayed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find some icons. You can go here and every time you do exactly the same. So you look for an icon, then you click, then you just copy paste this and you paste it as a name. And I'm going to fulfill all these icons. All right, this is done and here is the result. I got some icons here and a very nice effect. So we got our menu ready that is going to appear also on the mobile. Now let's work on the display of the mobile and the desktop. Okay, so we are coming back here to our two sidebars that are here. And here is probably the most important part and the most interesting part of this course for you guys. You can apply this method to any framework actually. And that's how I build my sidebars um, for mobile and uh, for desktop all the time. Okay, so at first we would like to have a variable called open and by default it's going to be on true. You understood it's for the sidebar on the menu because we're gonna have actually a burger menu. All right, so we've got those two sidebars. Let's start first with basically the desktop sidebar, okay? So what I want to have is a width of 200 pixels by default, and I want it to be H screen by default. Then I would like to have a flex, a flex call, and a justify between. I would like to have my element on justify between. And to end, I would like to have a border on the right. So when I come back, I got this very nice here this very nice uh, border that is making a separation between the two elements. Later, this sidebar is going to be fixed. Okay, let's say that at the end, I would like to have another item and this item is going to be the user item. We are going to come back to it later. So basically here on the bottom, we can see that we will have another uh, um, element that is coming after. So we can see here that basically sidebar menu here is taking all the space. That's what we wanted with the grow um, class that we put before. Okay, so now we are going to focus on this sidebar here on the top because look at this. If I reduce the, the sidebar that I have here is not displayed. Okay, so what I want to do at first is to put some Z index because we want our sidebar to be on top of each other. Then what I need to add is basically here um, an items center justify between, justify between, there we go, a wasteful, ageful P4. Okay, and probably I would like to have a BG white, but it's not sure yet. I got this element now, and actually my sidebar menu is not going to be into this div. It's going to be into another one. So I'm going just to remove that for now for you to understand. Okay, what I want to have is the logo, and I would like to have also here, I would like to have an icon, and this icon is going to be the uh, burger menu. So I'm going to add a Z50 on this one also, a cursor pointer, a left two, top two, okay, position on relative. And then I would like to have a size of 30. And my icon here, I already grabbed it. It's an icon, a burger menu icon. So basically, again, if you look for an icon, you can go on Iconify. And then on Iconify, you can go grab an icon of a burger menu. So here, if I type burger here, I'm going to have some different icons. And let's say that I got this one here that is very nice. So I'm just going to copy paste the name. I mean, to come back here, I'm going to put the name of my icon, which is just here. And what I want to say is to say that on click, okay, I want open to be true. So by default, it's on true. So here we're going to see how it works. For the need of this course, I'm going to pass directly into a, a mobile mode. So you will understand. Okay, so we've got here this sidebar with actually the logo and the burger menu, but this is not necessarily what we would like to have, which means that we need to make some changes on the layout. And on the layout, what we need to do is basically to turn the sidebar into a header. So this is the trick. I'm going to get back in here. We can see here that it's in flex, 
But actually, if I turn that into a grid, suddenly we've got the header. Okay, so now I move here and we can see that the sidebar is moving into a header. Okay, so we've got it. And now we see that when I, we click on open, we've got this open true here. So you understand that now we are going to work on the menu that we are going to build. And this menu is going to be on top of everything. So I'm going to go and here it's immediately inside the sidebar. Okay. I'm going to go here and to put here the sidebar menu. And this element, this sidebar menu that we got here, of course, needs to be on absolute. Okay. So at first it's going to be only if it's open. And here we need to put a class absolute. Okay. We want it to be on absolute. And there we go. We've got our element, which is here. Okay. We've got this absolute. We want it to be top zero, left zero. And we want it to be Z50 with full, H full, H screen, and BG white. You understood that. And suddenly, there we go, we've got our menu. However, the problem is that we can see that we've got here um, the menu that is not necessarily at the right place. We need to fix that. We are going to fix it after. What we want to do also is to have an icon to close. So I can just copy paste this icon here. And this icon exactly here is going to have also an absolute, right? An absolute position. And it's going to be on right zero and actually on right four, it's going to be better and on top four and we should be good. Okay. Now I need to grab an icon um, that is going to be a close icon. So I can use just material symbols by default close and we can see that we've got the close in here. Okay. But if you have that case, there's a problem. Why there is a problem? For one reason, because we see that we don't have a menu that is taking all the space as expected. So if you want to identify this kind of problem, what you can do here is to come here. We can see that we have a BG white. We can put BG red 500. And suddenly we see that actually the position here of the sidebar and, and actually the overflow is enabled. So there is a reason for that. We didn't put an overflow uh, somewhere visible, but there is here the class relative on the parent. So if we remove, if we remove the class relative, suddenly we have the behavior we wait for. So I'm going to come back here, put my BG white there. And there we go. We've got our menu. So remember when we click on the close icon, it's going to be open false. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to click here and it works. We can open and close the menu this way directly here. And what we would like to add also in here, it's not an absolute, it's more a fixed because we would like that the menu would be fixed all the time. Okay. It's going to be the same for the sidebar up here, but we're going to come back to it later. All right. So let's look at it now. If I grab this and I come back, I got my sidebar, which is not fixed yet also that is available here. I can click on it and I could add the router, but I'm going to add the router later. And if I come to mobile, I got this behavior in here. So we succeed to create actually a sidebar that have a, that has a behavior for mobile and for desktop at the same time. And we reuse the menu, which is here immediately here, we reuse this component menu to display on the mobile and on the desktop, the menu itself. Later, we will have to work on when we click on an item here on the menu, the router is going to detect that we click on it and we will be able to emit an event directly from the sidebar to close here this open uh, variable that we got here. 